Uncle Ben, a popular face on our rice packets for as long as many of us can remember. But did you know there's a story behind the famous face? And a reason you've seen his cheeky smirk less and less in recent years. Uncle Ben? My name is McFoodie and today on Food Thoughts we explore who was the real Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben's rice began its journey in the 1940s and quickly became a popular selling rice, taking the top spot in the 50s all the way up until the 90s. Up until as recently as 2020, Uncle Ben was the face of the brand, a face we all knew, loved and recognised amongst a sea of other rice packets. After all, he's been on our rice packs our whole life. But what if I told you Uncle Ben may have never actually existed at all? But before I do, I welcome you to subscribe to the Food Thoughts channel and comment down below any other food related topics you'd like us to cover next. Uncle Ben was instead a fictional character, whose name was first used as a reference to an African American Texan rice farmer, known for his high quality rice, meaning that the man on our rice packets is not Uncle Ben. So this begs the question, who is the face on our rice? The image used on the Uncle Ben packaging for all those years was in fact a Chicago chef and waiter named Frank Brown. So why Frank Brown and not the real Uncle Ben you might ask? Well, Frank Brown worked in a restaurant in Chicago which was often visited by a businessman called Gordon L. Harwell. Harwell owned a company during the World War II supplying rice to the US and British Armed Force. This company was converted Rice Incorporated. Harwell knew the war would end one day and his rice sales would dry up meaning he would have to target a new audience, otherwise his business was in trouble. Harwell decided to try and expand his company and wanted to begin selling rice to the public. However, for his rice to appeal to the general public, he needed a rebrand. After all, who's going to buy rice with Converted Rice Incorporated on the packet? A new name and a face that people could trust. That's when he approached Mr. Brown at his Chicago restaurant and asked him to pose as the face of the brand. Harwell had heard the story of the rice farmer, Uncle Ben, in Chicago and decided this would be a good name for his new brand, as he would already have an instant market. People knew Uncle Ben in Chicago as a farmer with high quality rice. Harwell is now selling his rice under the legacy built by Uncle Ben of Chicago. Evil, yet genius. What do you think? Comment down below. Harwell also knew Frank Brown had a friendly face that the public would love. So, with the story of the Chicago rice farmer and the face of Frank Brown, Converted Rice Incorporated became Uncle Ben's Rice, a brand built on a fictional farmer and the face of a friendly Chicago chef. The rebrand took place in the late 1940s and instantly became a hit on American shelves. It was not long, however, before the brand came under fire for racial stereotyping and as another post-plantation era example of the white man taking advantage of the black man. Not only the name Uncle Ben was deemed racist, but the way Ben himself was presented by the company. Uncle Ben's bow tie could be evocative of black servants and Pullman porters, and his title Uncle only strengthens the racist connotation surrounding him. Uncle is a title white American Southerners once used as alternatives for older blacks, because they refused to call them Mr or Mrs, instead using Uncle or Aunt. Uncle could be perceived as somewhat nice as it allows Uncle Ben to be someone you'd refer to as family. Yet Uncle is not quite King, Sir or Mister, all of which would have been appropriate choices for one of the world's best selling rice. But anyway, that's just a food thought. I'll leave you to make your own conclusion on that one. Fast forward to a 2007 marketing campaign, Uncle Ben was promoted from mascot to chairman of the board. Featuring Uncle Ben himself was a rare move by the company, as he rarely appeared in advertisements. It was this move which they hoped would steer them clear of all racial association. During this campaign, they put Uncle Ben in a suit, being reborn as an accomplished businessman in a well-furnished office. Speaking on the 2007 campaign, Vincent Howell, president for the food division of the Master Foods USA unit of Mars, said that because consumers described Uncle Ben as having a timeless element to him. We didn't want to significantly change him. What's powerful to me is to show an African American icon in a position of prominence and authority. Mr. Howell said, as an African American, he makes me feel so proud. The reluctance to feature Uncle Ben in ads is a complete contrast to other food brands who regularly use their mascot in their marketing. Think of Colonel Sanders of KFC and the role he plays in the company's marketing. Howdy folks, it's me, Colonel Sanders. <coughs> But what is one key difference between the Colonel and Uncle Ben, I wonder? Uncle Ben can be said to be the silent spokesperson for the company, absent from the advertisements and reduced to staring mutely at consumers from packets. I like the Uncle Ben's better. Uncle Ben's rice in an instant. The instant the minute rice users prefer. Mars again came under fire, 
for the continued use of the Uncle Ben's racial stereotyping in 2020 after the police killing of George Floyd. Following on from this tragic event, Mars became one of the several global food companies to agree to drop controversial racial imagery from its branding. This led to original Ben's being born and Uncle Ben's face dropped from the packaging. Mars said that the change marked the brand's next step in its ambition to create a more inclusive future while maintaining its commitment to producing the world's best rice. And that was the end of Uncle Ben's seven decade rice packet reign. So there we have it. The friendly face on the rice packet is no more. Uncle Ben's rice is now Ben's original and Frank Brown is just a fading face in our memory. Who knew a microwavable packet of rice could have such history? Should we cover more food companies who have famously used the black community as the face of their brand? Aunt Jemima or Rastus of cream of wheat hot cereal? Anyway, don't forget to subscribe for more food thoughts.